God will honor you. If you surrender to him and you put down your pride, the Lord will honor you. Now today we have the Bible here. Moses already has history right there. There are five books here about him. Wow, famous Moses. And the Moses is very patient. As you know, he surrendered to God. You see, Moses, even when he took off his sandal, he didn't say, no, he didn't play. He took it off right and he kneeled down again. Oh, he was scared of him. He feared him. But God said, obviously, I'm with you. Imagine that. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, no matter what, your reputation, no matter your, your dream, your plan, your vision, you know, you're having stop. Instead, you what? Uh, deny yourself and go to God. What is your dream for me? What's your plan for me? Who am I to show me? And I give it to you. I surrender it all to you. Surrender your name. That's what I mean. Your name. Surrender and give it to you. Amen. Hey, 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 look, beautiful. You seem to come remember the announcement. We are all excited, right? Because it's for him, the glory of him, right? That's when you give honor to the Lord. A lot of churches are going to keep you busy for the Lord, right? Amen. Yeah. To honor God. Announcement. Not like before. Continue announcing that for him. The retreat, everything going, oh, yeah, wonderful, it's beautiful. Now, I love that. Remember yesterday, the football, the silver ball, huh? Yeah, you miss it. No, of course not. We should be the same. Yeah, yeah, for the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Are you embarrassed about Jesus? Uh, well, no. Are you embarrassed about Jesus with flying? Uh, no, of course not. Jesus is the champ. He's awesome. Glorify him. You made the universe. Wow. That's the question. Do you give your name, your reputation? Whatever? Do you give it to God and surrender? Amen. Now, now, the next, the fourth thing right now, right now, the fourth thing. Do you remember? Trust me. Remember the title, 118, verse 8. Remember, remember, trust him. You know, you know, give it to him. Surrender it to him. Now, the fourth thing, well, are you willing to follow Jesus if it means if you lose your job? Because you're a Christian, or uh, they, back, they, they maybe include your workers, come they, they back off from you, from your work, when they make fun of you, are you willing to continue following Jesus? That's the thing right there. Yes, that's right. We have to continue. Who we are, right? We're children of God. Wow. That's something we have to think about. Now, only home. Your friend, but also at your job too. That's the big question. Wow. The picture right here, you see? It's important when you think about money and about think God. No. Your goal, my goal, my job, I want. Or what if the Lord says, hey, to go and preach another country. Well, the Lord calls you to come pastor the church. Huh? Well, the Lord calls you to minister. Well, the Lord calls you to do it. You never know, huh? You have to pray to God. You will all flow together to pray and let it flow with Him. 
along one another. We have support for each other. The same like with the no time ago, I wanted to become a doctor. I want to become a doctor. And the girl, you know, lost the prophet, the prophecies. Uh, of, uh, want me to become a pastor. First, like, oh, uh, how do you know, Charles? How do you know that? One time, two times, two different pastors that got to different churches. The one that guest speakers with, hey, you know, the Holy Spirit told me. I was like, huh? I didn't know that. And then the second one, I met a pastor. Hey, you know, let you know. God told me, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. That you become pastor. I'm like, how do you know I want to come pastor? At the time, I was like, I was not comfortable with religion at that time, you know. I like to be neutral. The third one, my dad, his office. My dad's a pastor, but the office happened. Someone called to, hey, I saw a dream that your son will be a pastor. A dream. Like, oh, wow. Uh, that time, I was close to graduating high school. I probably have a different major, you know. Do you become a doctor or something? Like, uh, I thought about it. I decided to give up and become a pastor to study God's word. Like, today I'm a pastor right now. You understand? I have a the church, yeah. I'm doing soon ministry, continuing. But the Holy Spirit is still surprising us today. I'm still learning. Wow. Let's leave it there. To surrender to God. It was worth it to surrender. Amazing. That's the point, the job. Something that's sacrificed for him. Jesus was young and a rich man right here. In this Bible story right here, I'm going to show you. Okay. It happened when the, the, the young rich man heard about Jesus, about the ministry he does. The rich man was like, hey, Jesus, you're a good teacher. Wow. She said, oh, yeah. You tell me I'm a good teacher. Okay, you know. Oh, I finished studying all oh, God's laws. What do I do now? She said, oh, you want to be perfect, huh? What do you need to do? You need to go sell what you have and give it to the poor, and you will have the wealth in heaven. And come and follow me. What happened? The rich man was like, oh, he was shocked. He was stunned, and he walked away depressed. Why the rich man was comfortable to get, he want to follow Jesus. You want to be perfect, huh? He had to give up everything. He didn't want to give up his comfort. Whatever he had, he didn't want to give it to the poor. Not the rich man didn't want to. He was, he'd rather be comfortable. And be careful right there. What is, is it wrong to be rich? No. But the gospel, you have to share with the church to give to people. You have to give your offering, your tie, you have to, like you help each other here. Yeah. You have to surrender it, surrender your time, not only money, but surrender your time for the church to give it all. But the rich man liked his comfort. That was hard. He couldn't give to Jesus. He wanted the comfort. He didn't want to give up. But you have to give up and follow Jesus. Even Jesus says, hey, come follow me. 
can you imagine a big honor? Jesus telling him to come follow me. Should have been thrilled about it, but no. He wanted to stay comfortable with his finances, his money, his home, his everything else. That's sad. Remember, we showed you the different countries, you know, the fanciness right there. They took the risk by here, oh, they're comfortable, they want to, why they, they want to do it, why they're not comfortable. That's sad. We help the Holy Spirit. God in this work and included in you. That's your action for God. His work is already included in you. That's the scripture right here. Colossians right here. Chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. Whatever you do, do it from the heart for what for you know, for the law, for the people. Know that you will get a reward. You want to serve the law, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the Lord use you to serve him. You know, go ahead and serve him. Let the Lord surprise you. The Lord will bless you. How, 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 how? Don't worry about it. Let God lead you. God's already provided to meet your need. The Lord knows what your needs are. Your food, your finances, your health. The Lord knows everything. To keep serving the Lord. Don't be fearful. Amen. This scripture is from Isaiah. Chapter 64, verse 8. And it says, Still, Lord, is our Father, and we are the clay. You are the potter, and we all are the work of your hand. Amen? So whatever your job is, whatever you do to serve... I'm going to ask you a question. Can you, if you are a pot or a vessel, and the person who is creating you, the potter, there's a reason for it, right? Maybe it's for a flower, to be a vase. And you're like, oh, I don't know what this potter's doing. What are they making me into? Would you? No. The vessel that he's making, you know, you, you can't say, oh, what, what is the purpose of this? I don't know. You know, I'm just a shape. But the potter who's creating it has a reason, has a plan for that. Whether it's for a flower, what if it's a basket for fruit, or whatever it is. In the same way, when you're born on earth, you don't know your purpose, you don't know who you are. You have to ask the person who created you. When you were born, you know, your DNA, the Lord made it perfect. The Lord knows why you are here, and you have a purpose. It's not just, oh, I'm here, I'm, I was born, and that's it. You have a purpose. You are the clay, and, and there you are. It just wasn't just something that came to be, but you were made by someone, and that is the Lord. Now, in the same way God created the earth and the universe... And we're saying, oh, we know what we're doing. We don't need that. No, we have to surrender and serve him. Oh, my name is this. No, it's his name, and it's all about serving him. So those are the two questions. 
Give him the honor to his name and serve him. I'm not saying, oh, you have to lose your job and quit so you can serve God. Maybe the Lord wants you to stay and work through you with the Holy Spirit within you to show love, to get involved in your workplace. And people may say, oh, you're different. Maybe it's in your family or maybe it's with your friend group. Let his love be within you. And let it shine. That is who we are. We should honor him and serve him with everything that we do. Amen? So beautiful, beautiful is this. I wanted to share three things. Here's the first verse in the Bible, all the way at the end. So go back to Genesis. The first scripture is what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then we go to the middle and we find what? It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. And then we go to the end. And this is amazing. What does it say? It says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Okay, remember yesterday, what did I share about God's grace? What is grace? It's a free gift that God has used. We don't just come to church and it's all about us. We know everything. No, 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 no. We don't. Jesus is the one that saves. He's the one that should brag. We should not have pride. We should have pride in him and honor him and glorify him. Get on our knees and bow down to him and worship him. Everything is because of his grace. And that's true love, and that's why we surrender ourselves and trust in him. Amen? Now, now, now is the time that we think and we think about welcoming his presence and Holy Spirit within us. I want to share a verse, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God gave us a spirit Not of fear, no, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. Self-discipline, that is Holy Spirit that wants to come within us. And that is why we should be proud to study God's word and the Bible. We shouldn't be putting it away and say, oh, you know, it's collecting dust at home. We should be proud of our Bible. We should be studying it. You have apps. There's ASL apps with verses. I don't care what way you do it. Memorize his his scripture. I was really impressed. There was one woman that I met. I was so stunned, really, it had been a long time. She was here yesterday, I don't know how long she was here, but that woman that I met a long time ago, in 2013, I was um, doing an internship with Pastor Rod at her church, LADC, and it happened that there was one woman that she was singing and singing, but she knew all of the the lyrics and I'm like how do you know all these scriptures and all these lyrics and she would memorize the scripture but through song any you know verses and songs and she would sing and sing the songs and songs of worship and wow I was so impressed I was there for three months for summer and then 2013 till 
yesterday. That same woman with the walker comes down the aisle, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's you. I remember you. I mean, the chills that I had, you know, in that moment, I'm like, yes, that's her. Amazing. In the same way that you should give the glory to God, you should humble yourselves, memorize his scripture, worship him. You shouldn't, I mean, it doesn't matter if you memorize everything, you know, it takes time to practice and persevere like a tree. Does a tree just grow? No, it takes time to grow its branches. And the same time, you lift up your hands and you're thirsty and you want, you know, the tree wants its sun and the wind and it plants its roots. And the roots are what? Love. And the trunk grows and that's faith. And the branches? Hope. That winds up with 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13, an infamous verse about love. And you get to the last part of the scripture, and it, there's three parts. Having faith, love, and hope. The most important thing is to have love first. So the roots of the tree, love, that comes first. And your love, you know, with your past, let the Lord cover you with love. You know, the tree has its roots, and it's dark down under the soil, right? Let the Lord cover you with his love, and that's where you begin to grow. And the trunk becomes your faith. That means today, in the future, the past, let's focus on today. Trust in him without seeing. That is having faith. That's the trunk. And that makes you stand strong. And the branches, you continue to have hope, and you... You be in his presence, and when he returns or the rapture happens, whatever it is, you continue to depend on him, and you're thirsty for him, and you're seeking Holy Spirit. That right now, you are trees, and you are seeking him. Plant your roots in his love. Grow your trunk with faith and your hope. Amen? Let's be in his presence, Holy Spirit. That's what the Lord wants to give you. Whether you're nervous or you're embarrassed, you don't want people to see you. Or, no! You should honor him. And, okay, yes, oh, I'm helping, I'm helping, I'm helping, but let's do some action. Do it. So those are the first two points, yes. Don't just talk about helping. No! You need to serve him. Do it. Hey, copy my signs. Copy my signs, okay? Seek and go to the world. Disciples, make disciples of all cultures. Baptize. Disciples into the Trinity. Wow. Teach. Teach what? To obey all of his commands. Teach. We should teach all of his laws. And incorporate them within and teach others. Amen? Now, this is famous, Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. This is the time of Jesus' resurrection. After he resurrected, Jesus told 500 people, disciples, over 500, they were all watching this happen, and Jesus is ascending into heaven, and he says what? Go, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them all 
all the things that I have commanded. I am always with you, even to the end of the world. Amen. 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 Jesus is real. He is not fake. He is real. And this is beautiful that Jesus says, I know he's with you. He didn't just say, oh, uh, there's you. No, he is with you. He's not embarrassed to be with you. And Jesus, it's the same Jesus that says, I'm with you to Moses. And Moses says, oh, I don't know. God said, I am with you. And now you're deaf and you can't speak? No. No, enough with that. You are the same. Everyone, he's with everyone, amen? Go into the world. And you don't just eagerly do it, but you need to be in his presence first. It's important that you make sure that it is his will. And you hear from him and you go with his flow and you obey him. Don't do it out of pride, okay? I know you might be excited and that's all right. But make sure that you spend time with his presence and that you really understand what he wants for you. Amen. I hate to admit You know, I went to college, I became a pastor, I have a bachelor's degree, it took four years, 2014 I graduated, and I tried to have this ministry, and I tried, and I tried, and, and nothing was really happening, no church, and I was like, okay, you know, I had to learn how to have patience, humility, and as time went on, I felt like I failed, you know? This is so funny. When I graduated with my bachelor's degree after the fourth year, you know, baptism and speaking in tongues, I didn't believe that. And I argued with the teacher. Can you imagine? The teacher and I were debating about this until the fourth year. I was depressed. And I went into this place, it was a church, it was quiet, it was vacant, it was at night at 11 o'clock, and I got on my knees, I had no words, I was just on my knees, and I lifted up my hands, and just soaking in his presence, and whatever it was in my heart, I don't know what it was, I was just giving it to him, I surrendered it all. And I'm just soaking in his presence, and then there was another voice, okay? I could feel my voice, but it was a, another voice coming out of me. And I could feel it in my body. And it was getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and I could feel it coming out of my body, and I'm just, okay? And I felt light. But that was speaking in tongues, and I didn't know the same thing that I arguing with the teacher about was now happening. For two hours, I soaked in his presence, and I was tearful. And the next day, in my class, you know, it's devotion time, we pray, we, we get together, and my teacher saw me speaking in tongues, and that, the same very thing that we had been debating about, he sat down and he waited, and then the teacher comes up to me, and the first question he asked me is, what happened? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, yesterday I explained, you know, I had this weird feeling. I didn't know what it was. I was praying. I just felt this coming out of me. And he's like, that is being baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It really happened. And I didn't realize. That's what the Lord wants. He wants you a broken heart. He wants you to give it to him. And in the same way, humble yourselves like Gideon and blow the horn. Gideon was weak. He came from a weak family, but the Lord used him with a horn and his hands and throwing clay pitchers, and it scared the enemy in the same way you can scare Satan out. 
Now, my point is, when I graduated college with my bachelor's degree, after four years, it should have taken me, you know, sooner, but it took me four years to be humble enough after I graduated, and then as time went on, I didn't use speaking in tongues. I had abandoned that. Until there was a time I, it, I think it was a seven year gap that had gone by and I was not using it, maybe here and there, but it was time for me, you know, I wanted to get serious. The gospel's worth it. So I got on my knees and I prayed and started speaking in tongues and really it was impossible, I don't know, but I don't know exactly what happened right now. I'm married, Bula. I never thought I'd be married. And I prayed, and I decided to contact Pastor Irby. And I, he said, you know, do you want to collaborate and connect as a team and call it Deaf Life Church on Long Island as a team? You know, I, I had planned to, to go to his, you know, Minnesota and learn, and Irby's like, Stay on Long Island, I will train you. Let's keep praying. Let's stay in New York. Stay with your wife. You know, so I had to humble myself, and time goes on. But it's not our timing. This is all the Lord's timing. Amen? You know, sometimes you may say, it's taking forever. Don't give up. It's worth it. The risk is worth it. This is the last scripture, and then we'll pray. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. You are the land. The church needs healing. Amen? Stand up. Let's pray. Lord, you are awesome, and your name is awesome. Lord Christ, you are so awesome. Your name is awesome, Lord. Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three in one, Almighty God, we praise you and we thank you for everything, for who you are and what you've done. We honor you in your name. In the work of your hands, you humbly serve. And now, let your presence flow upon us. Let us look up to you like a tree looking for the wind in the sky. Let us lift up our arms and seek you. 
We are thirsty for you, Holy Spirit. We are a trees planted deep in your love. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, for the world. And Jesus, you will return humbly to serve. You surrendered and you died. And you rose again. And now we can go and preach and honor you in your name. We can cry out and share the gospel. We shouldn't be ashamed to share your gospel, but we should share and reach out like a tree swaying in the wind. No matter if it's lightning or raining or whatever comes our way in life, the hot sun beating down on us, the cold, the snow that covers us, we stand strong. Whether it's hot or cold, that we stand strong and firm and remembering that we should trust in you and you will protect us, Lord. We need to trust not in people and in the world, but to let your light cover the world. Be within us and the people and the land. Let all of your light in your presence flow and let the tree grow strong. We lift up our hands and we seek to be planted in your faith and hope. And we want to seek you more, Lord. Come in this place, Holy Spirit. Come. We are before you, Lord, and we honor you. We take off our shoes. We bow down before you, Lord, in your presence. Open your hearts. Give them to him, the Lord. Surrender your life and trust in him. Like Psalm 118, verse 8 says, Surrender, trust in, he, in the Lord. Whether, whatever's happening around you, from the beginning of time, from creation of the universe, the heavens and the earth, it is all for your glory. And when Jesus came to the earth to die for us, he gave us grace. And because of that, we bow down and we give you the praise. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. All of our hands, we praise you. We pray for the lamb, those who are heal or need healing or broken, whether it's finance, finances, relationships, families, friends. Whatever it is by name, whatever it's your job or so many things, maybe confusion. We give it all to you and we surrender. It's time for worship. May the worship team come up on stage, let's, stage, let's worship. Open your hearts to the Lord right now. Worship. The altars are open for you. You can take the opportunity to spend some time with the Lord. If you want to talk, please go outside of the church and let the Holy Spirit move in this place. Or spend the church to go out and chit chat with your friends.
We have a little skit prepared for you from the children's ministry. So let's call the precious children up on stage. God has a heart for children, and they continue to pass on his word, and we will grow old someday. Yes, I will be old as well in the future. And maybe I can't walk, but God is passing on everything through our children for his glory. Children, come on up on stage. Hi. We have a brief message for you. My shirt says, Good News Club. That's the GNC. It's at Child Evangelism Fellowship, CEF. We're up with the Good News Club. Do this at CSDR, the School for the Deaf in Riverside. After school, the law in California permits to have the Good News Club in public schools with CEF. So we, we do that at the deaf school, and we've started doing that with the children there. And now, we have the children here for you today. They're gonna share a short skit with you guys, okay? Okay, you guys looking? You ready? dark with sin and all of my mistakes until I was saved the Savior came into my heart his precious blood I know has washed me white like snow I know Jesus is precious and he teaches me how to walk on his path in the streets of gold he teaches me his word and I continue to walk with Christ who's with me and I learn to read the Bible and pray And God's love covers me. Jesus' love, Jesus' love is over me. Join in and sing.
Jesus. You ready? My heart was dark with until the came into my heart. His precious blood I know has washed me white like snow. And in God's word, I am told, I'll, I continue to learn his word and read the scripture. And in God's word, I'll grow with Christ and his love covers me. And Jesus' love protects me. Okay, now we're going to have worship. Come join your parents with worship, okay? Oh, we're all going to do it together. together, okay? My heart was dark with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood has washed me white as snow. And in God's word, I'm told, I'll walk the streets of gold to grow in Christ every day. I'll read my Bible and pray. Oh, listen now, the story of God's love. And this is how to live in Jesus' love. Jesus loves you. God bless you guys. Also guys, CDF, we are looking in Fremont. We are trying to establish the Good News Club there in Fremont as well. So those of you in the north, if you're interested, we'll give you a flyer, okay? In Fremont, if you guys are interested in the Good News Club, children, you can pass out those flyers. Raise your hand if you want flyers about Fremont, the Good News Club. CSDR needs volunteers as well. Just go pass them out. Pass them out. Caitlin, I'll take one. Give that kid a couple. Like to give that kid two flowers to hand out to other people. You guys go to the back church and pass them out to people.
Bounce. for you. 